Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Altus, Oklahoma where we're going to be going to a very special museum. So buckle up and let's go for a ride. Inside these doors right here is an adventure to be had. Okay, they are open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 till 5. They are closed Sundays, Mondays, and for state holidays. And they have the admission prices right here on the sign. Very, very reasonable. We've moved inside the first gallery. This is going to take us through each exhibit, telling us a little bit more about the history. Now, as we get further and further along, it will start getting more and more modern. We're starting off with the Wichita Mountains. Did you know that the Wichita Mountains actually take their name from a group of Indians? Yeah. The Wichita Indians were the original inhabitants of the Wichita Mountains area. Through this series right here, we can actually find out more about the early inhabitants and what makes up the geology of the Wichita Mountains. Okay, my dad is with me and he actually just found this right here. It's a QR code that you can hover your phone over. And then he held the stool over his head and it acted as a helmet when the roof and ceiling of the building came down pinning him beneath a fallen beam so that just goes to show that there are several ways that you could experience this museum now we're still early into the museum so we're learning kind of as we go but so far we've seen visually things that you can look at in addition to things that you can read and then the QR codes which you can listen to but I did see there's a couple of other things over here as well that we're definitely gonna check out. Right here, for example, we can sit down and as we do, they have a touch screen that we can watch a little program. And I think that's what we're gonna do right now is sit and watch one of these programs that's available. Ooh, hiking. Ooh, in the Wichita mountains, yes. This is a slideshow of what you can see while you're hiking. And we've seen some of these views. This is so nice. And it's just a really calm way to see some of the Wichita's right here. Now, typically when we think of Native Americans, we think of the Indians that are depicted in Western movies. However, Native Americans actually were around far before those depictions. They have something called the Paleo Indians, which were here during the prehistoric times and they have some interesting things about them going after mastodons. That's crazy. Like, look at this right here. This is a Native American, and this is like a mastodon or a mammoth. And uh, wow, that's, that's crazy. And as we read this over here, we find out more about that. And they have actually found excavated remains that link these two together. Now, after living on the land and being mostly nomadic at some point they wanted to kind of make indians have to sit still and a part of this was moving them to reservations where they could call one specific piece of land home and this transition was of course pretty rough we've talked about that on some other videos but this exhibit right here is phenomenal it shows how one photographer actually was in really good with the Indians and he was able to photograph them in their regalia and show their true pride through the photos that he was able to collect. And it's kind of amazing to see these are some of his original pieces right in front of us. And wow, guys. And pieces like this, smiling, happy, just so amazing. And then right beside it, right here, you can see a more traditional attire. And it just kind of goes on and on in here. There's so many amazing, amazing portraits that were taken. And they actually have his camera over to the side here, as well as some of the original negatives as well. And then to learn a little bit more, we have at the information area right here, three different pieces that you can use for the QR codes. And then also, this book of information so it tells you about all of the postcards and 
the assimilation and how people would regard their names. Just all sorts of really interesting information that goes along with this time. This is awesome. The next one we're walking into, as soon as you start walking toward it, there are speakers. Did you know that the typical cowboy was actually pretty young? Usually under 20 years old. They were pretty poorly paid as well. They would ride with very few items. A bedroll, change of clothes, and their saddle. This is what some of that stuff might have looked like. And cowboys were actually a much more diverse group than what we often see in mainstream media. A lot of times you would have Americans, Hispanics, and freed African Americans who would all be roaming the plains together in these groups of cowboys. But again, they were usually younger, they carried very few things, they were not usually wed, and uh, that was kind of life on the, on the prairie. Here we see like ranchers. Ranchers were the main people who took up residence in Oklahoma whenever it came to the early 1880s. People would come here during the land run and make their mark. And then from there, that's when we start seeing more and more of the Hollywood style cowboys emerging. Now when the land run happened, a lot of people came to the area very quickly. And even though the prairie and the lands around were considered to be inhospitable and extremely hard, you had families who would come here trying to make a way for themselves. The one thing that I learn every time I come to a museum like this is that it was hard, like super, super hard back then from having to find your land, make your land work for you, and then to avoid all of the craziness that was going on, not just from one direction, but from like every direction. Somebody's been baking, but typically they baked in things like this. Dutch ovens. You still see people using these at like campfires and things, but this isn't the main way we cook now, obviously. Let's check this one out right now. This is the Criswell dugout. And this is a rear view from the northeast corner. Let's click it. That is what one of these homes might have looked like. Now on this same kiosk, we have the dwellings, the Cross S Ranch, and also education. Let's look at education since we're in this section right now. Okay, so this is all the photography that they have collected dealing with the history of Oklahoma in this area. This is the Warren School, an early school building in Warren, Oklahoma. Okay, it says here that this was probably taken in the 1920s. And they said, look at the rugged landscape. Yeah, there's no trees whatsoever on this. And it looks like it is just kind of in the middle of the wilderness there. As you can see from those photos, school was pretty primitive back then. This is what the desks might have looked like. And a photo behind shows what a full classroom might have been like at that time. Now these original schools were divided into little districts that did not exceed five miles because people would have to get there. And at the time they didn't have cars. So you might have a small schoolhouse to service five miles and people might have to walk four and a half of those miles. That's just kind of how it was. Because of that, attendance was kind of patchy at times, at best, but um, they did provide those services. And it was a lot different than schools now, a lot. So as time kind of passed and transportation got better, obviously that improved some of that. But in the beginning, it was just a schoolhouse, one teacher who was in charge of like everything, and you might have had kids from grades, kindergarten through eighth grade there. Look at this stained glass, this is beautiful. Now in the earlier days, it says that 
communities like these would have been sustained by their faith. And so you would have tent revivals like this. And you would have congregations of people which would have a church home very similar to this. Now, in some of my previous videos, I've talked about the Montgomery Ward and Sears and Roebuck catalogs. And I questioned if you could just order things and then like the mailman had to bring them because that's what they have to do now. But most of the times when you would order from these catalogs, it would actually go to the general store. The general store was the place that everything took place. You could literally go in there and get most anything that you would need supply-wise, and if they didn't have it, they could probably get it for you, for a cost, of course. But this next little section here talks a little bit more about the general store. One of the earliest known trading posts in Southwest Oklahoma was developed in 1837. The trading post was at the west bank of the Cache Creek near present-day Lawton, about 50 miles east of Altus. Now, in 1878, the first general store was actually put in, but it was on the Texas side of the Red River, so it was a little further away. This was Doan's General Store, and it actually served a lot of the Western Trail for quite some time, giving them all sorts of different items that they could come in and get from that store. Right here, you can see that they have something called Doan's Crossing. And the ford at the Red River was known as Doan's Crossing, named for the store on the Texas side. And so right here, you can actually see what the store might have looked like in this old, old photo. Now, as times continued on, more and more things were accessible. So, for example, in 1902, this particular store right here popped up. And you can actually see not only what the outside looked like, but also an interior view from the post office which would have also been included. Now unlike our stores now they would actually deal in cash credit and also on trade. So if a farmer for example knew that their crops weren't going to be harvested for several months they could buy on credit like a line of credit and then when the crops were sold off then they could come in and settle up. Now, if they continued this credit for too long, they would be cut off. So that's kind of how that worked. But it was a lot different then. A lot, a lot different. It wasn't where they had something they could swipe. No, 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 that didn't exist. It was a different kind of credit. Now guys, my dad is a mailman and he drives something very different than this. This is an old mail truck right here. And this is how they used to get the mail from one place to the next. Wow so different now here we see the medical arts display did you know that a single doctor would be in charge of not only taking care of your physical health with your regular stuff but also might be a dentist and an optometrist they dealt with all of those things and so you would come to your area doctor and they might prescribe you glasses or they might give you something to numb the pain before you had to get an extraction for a tooth. Doctors would actually travel to schools to do your inspections for sore throats and for sickness outbreaks. They would do your eye exams, things like that. And doctors of the times made house calls. They would bring out their horse or their horse and buggy and they'd come right to you whenever you're sick. Now, they may not be the fastest, and you may not have to pay them in cash. You could usually give them produce, like chickens, hogs, or eggs, or even items from your garden to pay. And what happened in the early times if somebody didn't obey the law? Well, then you would have to turn to the peacekeepers. The peacekeepers of Oklahoma found criminals that they could, and they actually went across the state looking for illegal activities such as robberies and bootleggers. Mm -hmm. 
some of the different items that we're finding in these different galleries are just like really neat to look at. So you have like furniture and music, wedding dresses, all sorts of stuff that would have been from the period. And then there's this. This is kind of interesting right here. This right here says, to all whom these presents shall come, greeting, homestead certificate, application number. And so this is what it would have looked like if you would have come here in the land rush and picked up a track of land. You would have had something that was like this to certify that you were the person who owned this piece of property. This right here is the Jackson County Courthouse. And it was described to be built with a handsome dome on the top. It says here that the items that you find in this case would have been similar to those that were used in the courthouse at the time. Now, in front of the courthouse, there would have been a water tower. This depicted kind of over here in this picture. This would have been the only supply of water for all those who lived in the town. So business owners would go to the well in the morning before they would open and grab a couple of buckets of water. That way they could use them throughout the day. People who were residents would come here to get their daily supply of water and livestock like these horses would actually be watered on the square. Now today there's massive infrastructure built for all cities and places like Altus that are huge have a water resource that is much, much larger to accommodate more people, obviously. But they had to start somewhere and they started with this one little tower. And that's cool to see because as you drive in to this location, you actually see one of their reservoirs and it's huge. And to know that that's there now, but this is where they started, wow. So after they moved to a different kind of method, notice how how deep under the ground this is right here. This is whenever they built the dam. And the original pipeline was actually looking like this. Now, this was made of redwood. And this is a section of what that might have looked like. Obviously, a little bit more durable than some choices, but not a long-term solution by any means. And now we see this chair and desk with an award here, but behind it is the new dam and much more modern. Now we had just gone out and checked out Quartz Mountain State Park. And there's a sign there that says something very interesting in regards to this dam. During the earlier days of settlements here in this area, there was a town called Lugert and it actually kind of thrived. It had a few hundred people in it. However, as times changed and people started to dwindle, they opted to build what is now called Lake Altus. And Lugert was kind of in the way. So they flooded Lugert. And now there was actually the missing town of Lugert is under the water. Whenever the water recedes, you can actually see pieces of the old Lugert still to this day. And it's made the news a couple of times, so that's kind of a cool fact. But this guy right here, W.C. Austin, he was the one who was in charge of that dam being built. So there's a big plaque out there at Lake Altus of this guy right here. So definitely another site to check out if you're in this area. Oh, it looks like Dad found something. What is this, Dad? Well, this is a working model of a, I imagine, a steam uh, cotton gin. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at this. See what the belts are turning underneath and on the side. Okay, let me go over here. Wow. And speaking of cotton, this is what that kind of operation might have looked like. Look at all of that cotton and look at all those people. Cotton was a major industry in this area because it didn't need some of the same things that other crops would. So they were able to easily grow it and then use it in several different ways. And here you can kind of see 
different things. Everything from cotton thread to fibers, what they called cotton seed cakes, cotton seed meal. In this section though, you can find out more about the homesteaders telling their own version of the story when it comes to the cotton industry. It says here, the higher rate of return from cotton encouraged rapid expansion of the numbers of acres planted in cotton. Farmers realized that $25 to $50 per acre for cotton, but only 14 or 11 for wheat or corn. So they were making a lot more money on the same acreage by doing cotton. Okay, dad found us another little hidden gem I have to share with you guys right here. Do you see what I see? This is a massive elephant. And it says here that the floods, actually the Red River, whenever it swelled up, a lot of the animals from a circus got out and people found them and started using them to uh, do some things. For example, like getting things unstuck and dredging down some of the river. So that was, that was kind of a fun thing. But because of that, the circus couldn't open when it was supposed to because they were missing some of their attractions, AKA the elephants. <laughs> Okay guys, let's move a little bit more modern now. Let's talk about some of the things that kind of tied even to today. Did you know that Altus is the home of a military installation? Yeah, they, they are. And so some really interesting things happen here as a result of that. Here you can find all of the different kinds of aviation units that might have been used. So all the different planes and what they would have done, how many people would have been on them, how big that they would be. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, they had so many of these and a lot of them were named after Altus. And to tell us a little bit more about those stories, we have another one of these really interesting books of information. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? And what is this? This exhibit is called The Weight of the World on His Shoulders. And here we have what is called a launch control console. Now the base that was located in Altus, Oklahoma actually had a lot to do with what we're seeing right here. Apparently, this is a response to the Soviet Union launching their first satellite in the 1950s. They came up with all this and put the weight of the world on an Altus, Oklahoma. It says here that the Altus missile silos extended deep into the water table. Pumps were then isolated to drain the excavation sites. The Fargo, the Texas site in particular, were plagued with groundwater intrusions. That's why Altus became quite the epicenter. They had it down and they actually have an atlas fact sheet because the atlas had ties to Altus. And now we're going outside. Remember how inside I was showing you the Criswell dugout and I said that the planks were numbered so that they could move it for preservation. Well, they moved it right here to the grounds and now we can go inside this building, which is the Criswell dugout. This is a great way for us to kind of get an awareness of overall size. Now remember the dugout provided only the front end of it to be exposed to the elements and it was dug into a hillside to give it a little bit of protection. So this one has been built accordingly and it looks like dad has beat us inside. So here we go. Wow. Okay guys, so um, we're standing here and I have this much room above my head. Dad is having to bend down because he doesn't fit. <laughs> it is not tall in here at all. And this is a tiny, tiny place. Now, as you can see, there's kind of a hole that goes up to a loft. It says here that that's where the kids would sleep. It's not tall in there at all. So it, it would be kind of equivalent to a tiny house of today that has like a lofted top. But you can see 
what it would have been like to be in one of these little dugout houses. Like even the, the rock right here, it's like a rock and mud kind of setup. But I will say this, we're inside here, it is cooler in here than it is outside. And the deeper that I get into the house, the cooler it feels. Now this is another home that we saw inside from the historic photos. This is the Cross S. And here you can read a little bit more about it. It was originally established in the 1880s. It was a ranch home. And the Cross S Ranch actually encompassed 21 different sections of land. After being built when it was, it lasted until about the 1970s before it was just in total disrepair. It was in really, really bad shape. In the 1980s, the Western Trail Historical Society actually had come along and they opted to make this one of the buildings that they would put back together and save. So what we're seeing today is a result of that group coming along in the 80s and working to preserve structures like this for us today. Now, while this structure is a lot larger than the last one, it still is much smaller than traditional homes today. And as you can see, the roof area or the second story area is exposed so you can see up there, but you can't go up there. There's, there's literally no floor. But it's really amazing to see kind of what this style of home would have looked like. And again, this was in really bad shape, like crumbling to the ground, non-existent kind of shape. So see it now, it's like, wow, this is amazing. Now this is a stairway that used to go up to that second floor, but again, this is not accessible to us. There are various farm implements out here for us to see, and these are likely what would have been used at the ranch. But we're not finished yet, guys. There's another structure, and this one has a working windmill that is pumping water into this big, like, circular horse trough thing. So we're gonna go take that out too. I am really, really pleased. This is a $4 museum and it feels like we are getting a much larger than $4 experience today. I'm, I'm so happy right now, guys. This is the kind of adventures that I like to go on. We're getting our brain wrinkles. We're learning a little bit. We're enjoying the beautiful weather. This is, this is a good way to spend some time in Oklahoma. This barn has some very interesting equipment in it. Like, what is this? This is crazy looking. It's like a sled on the bottom. It has these little tillers on it. Okay, so dad, explain that again, because I'm confused. There are a lot of things going on with this. This was used to raise and lower these. If you look, this is on pivots. So if you put it one way, it would raise these up. Okay. Put it the other way, it would let them down to the ground and then to get them to rock to the angle you did, you would have pushed these. Okay, so dad found the sign after his explanation, which was really good, and it's called the Go Devil. And it actually was more versatile because it didn't have wheels, and so it would use these little skids down here, and it could be pulled along by a single horse. So that is how that works. And like I said before, it was hard then, guys. Hey there, Mr. Horse. How are you today? Okay guys, so this is our little tank right here, our little stock tank, and there's some koi in there and they're awesome. And dad said that a while ago when the wind was up, this little pipe right here was actually pumping water into the koi pond. And then they have a little fountain just to kind of circulate. But this is a working windmill. This is so cool. You see these all over the place in Oklahoma still, but most of them don't work anymore. And so to be able to come here and actually see one work is kind of neat. 
After we move back inside, there's one last gallery, and this gallery is kind of a gallery of different kinds of things that didn't necessarily fit with some of the other items, but are very important and very cool items. So this is gonna be a collection of really interesting things. Okay guys, that was the amazing museum here in Altus, Oklahoma. I have thoroughly enjoyed taking you all through the different galleries and checking out all of the artifacts and the history of this area. We found out everything from whenever the Plains Indians would settle in this region to what happened when settlers came and what some of the civilizations at the time might have looked like. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have, please leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and then check out my other uploads. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday right here on the channel. Till next time guys.